Welcome back to Game Theory 101. I'm William Spaniel. Today's topic is pooling equilibrium. This is the second in our series of videos on how to actually solve for perfect Bayesian equilibria in signaling games. We covered separating strategies last time. I'll be referring back to it in this lecture, so you might find it useful to go back to that previous one before you watch the rest of this. In any case, we're actually going to be using the same game as what we covered last time. So this is a war game between player one and player two, where player one has some private information about whether he's a strong type or a weak type. He can then choose whether to reveal or hide, and player two chooses whether to fight or quit. Player two has a very simple, straightforward incentive. She wants to fight against the weak type and quit against the strong type. Player one, meanwhile, just wants to have player two quit, whether he's weak or strong, and will face a small cost if he reveals his information, whether he's strong or weak. So the only information set player two has is what happens when player one hides. She doesn't actually directly observe player one's strategy in those circumstances. Whereas in the top half of the game tree, when player one has either revealed himself to be strong in the strong case or weak in the weak case, she knows exactly what's happened before. And like what we saw last time, again, we can solve for the top half of the game tree very simply for that reason. She has complete and perfect information here, so it's a simple, straightforward comparison of her utilities. We can do backward induction here. And so if we're in that top left corner because player one has revealed himself to be strong, she is going to fight because negative one is better than zero. And if we're in the top right corner because player one has revealed himself to be weak, then what we have is a payoff of 0.5 for fight and a payoff of zero for quit, so she'll fight under that circumstance. Now, going back to the original game and erasing the things that we don't need, having done that backward induction, we know what's happening in the top half of the game tree. What's now our task is to figure out what's going to happen in the bottom half using pooling equilibria as our candidates for equilibria. So what is a pooling equilibrium? Well, each type takes an identical action in a pooling equilibrium. And as a consequence of that, the uninformed player player two in our game, cannot update her belief about her opponent after observing the equilibrium move. And the reason for that is because they're both taking identical actions. The strong type is doing exactly the same thing as the weak type, and vice versa. So you don't learn anything from seeing a hide strategy being played, for example, because both the strong and the weak type are supposed to be doing that in a pooling equilibrium. So let's actually go through the algorithm that we're going to be using to solve for pooling equilibrium in this lecture. There's a slight complication that we'll see later on. We're not going to focus on it here. I just want you to think about this. It's the same as what we saw with separating equilibrium last time, where we're starting off by identifying a set of pooling strategies. We're then solving for the other player's best response to those strategies. We're then checking whether the first player can profitably deviate, and then we're repeating step one until we've exhausted all possible cases. There's a slight caveat with the second part of this. It doesn't apply to what we're covering here, but will be the entire intention and focus of our next lecture. Let's worry about this for now, though. Let's start with the first topic, the first part of our algorithm. We're going to identify a set of pooling strategies. Well, one set of pooling strategies is for both the strong and the weak type to hide. If they're both doing that as a pure strategy, then there's no change in player two's belief. She's not getting any extra information out of player one by virtue of the fact that player one has chosen to hide. That means we can go straight to the next step, solve for the other player's best response to those strategies. Well, you might recall that in order to solve for the best response to a set of strategies from player one, we have to identify what player two's belief is. That's because, going back to the equilibrium definition, players are updating via Bayes' rule in a perfect Bayesian equilibrium. What we saw last time with separating equilibrium is that the updating process was fairly trivial. Only one type was taking the action, the other type was not taking the action. So if you observed that action in question, it has to be the first type and it can't be the second type. So we didn't have to do any complicated calculations with Bayes' rule. We also don't have to do any complicated calculations with Bayes' rule for pooling equilibria here because, again, player two is not getting any extra information about player one based off of the strategy. So her posterior belief, her belief conditional on having observed hide, needs to be identical to her prior belief about player one's type. 
So 60% of the time, she's still thinking she's facing that strong type, and 40% of the time, she's still thinking she's facing that weak type. Now we can go back to our definition for perfect Bayesian equilibrium and figure out what perfect Bayesian equilibrium is telling us about the strategy that player two needs to adopt. Specifically, player two needs to choose the optimal strategy given her belief. Well, we have that belief, and now that we have that belief, we just have to do a simple expected utility calculation. Her expected utility for fighting, well, we have two different fight strategies, we have two different probabilities, and two different payoffs associated with that. If she fights, then 60% of the time, she'll have actually been facing that strong type, and she'll receive a payoff of negative 1. 40% of the time, she'll have been facing a weak type and receive a payoff of 0.5. So if we take the weighted average of negative 1 and 0.5, and we just do a simple bit of multiplication and addition, we get an expected utility in total of negative 0.4. Her expected utility for quitting is fairly straightforward. It doesn't matter whether player 1 is a strong or a weak type. She receives a payoff of 0 in either case. So her utility for quitting is 0. Now we can compare those two, and it's quite straightforward as well that her utility for fighting is worse than her utility for quitting, so she has to quit. We have now solved for what her best response is to the strategies that we had from player one, which means we can advance to the third step of our algorithm, which is to check whether the first player can profitably deviate. I have now taken all of the information that we have so far in this game tree, and we can figure it out based off of this. So let's look at both the strong type and the weak type and verify that neither one of them has a profitable deviation. Well, let's go ahead and erase the right side and just focus on the strong type. The strong type in this alleged pooling equilibrium is hiding, and then player two is quitting, which gives him a payoff of one. If he deviates, then his only other option is to reveal, and in which case player two quits and he receives a payoff of 0.99. 1 is slightly better than 0.99, so he is happy to continue with his equilibrium strategy. The strong type has no profitable deviation. What about the weak type? Well, switching sides. If the weak type sticks with her equilibrium or his equilibrium strategy, then he's going to hide and player 2 is going to quit. He'll get a payoff of 1 for that. If he deviates to revealing, player 2 fights and he receives a payoff of negative 1.01. That's now a lot worse than what his alternative was, sticking with his equilibrium strategy. So again, we have a case where a type is satisfied with the strategy. She doesn't have, or rather he doesn't have a profitable deviation either. That means that we have a pooling equilibrium. And in that equilibrium, both types of player one, strong and weak, choose to hide. Player two's strategies are as follows. Remember, for perfect Bayesian equilibria, we need strategies both on and off the equilibrium path. Player two is going to quit when the strong type reveals. That's off the path, because on the path, player one is hiding. Player one is never having to reveal information, whether he is the strong or the weak type. So that part is off the equilibrium path. In addition, player two is going to fight when the weak type reveals. But again, that's off the equilibrium path. And finally, she is going to quit when she observes player one hide. That is the one thing that is on the equilibrium path. And then after observing player one hide, we have to have a belief for player two, because a perfect Bayesian equilibrium is both strategies and beliefs. And after player two has observed player one hide, her belief is that he is strong with probability 0.6, which is equivalent to the prior belief. So that's a pooling equilibrium for you. Now, there's one set of pure strategies from player one, the two different types of player one that we've yet to cover. And that's what would happen if both types of player one chose to reveal. Now you might think that this is going to be straightforward given every other set of pure strategies that we've looked at from player one, from the types of player one. It turns out that's not the case. It's actually fairly complicated. And we're going to be addressing why that's the case and talk about the solution and what to do under those circumstances in the next lecture when we cover off-the-path beliefs. I hope you enjoyed this lecture, and I hope to see you next time. Take care.